Hertz cuts it back the other way. What the fuck is that? <laughs> oh, what a shit. dumb play. <laughs> Why would you do that? Why would they run that play? Oh, th this is I what I need. I don't understand the play calling. This is what Get I need. Get Swift in there. He's killing them. What is that bullshit? My God, there's such a stupid team. Stupid coaches. They're stupid. <laughs> They're stupid. I can't stand this coaching staff. I want him fired. Oh, he's going. He's he's getting closer to the edge. Nine. You take DeAndre Swift out of the game and you run two bullshit calls. Mm. Nick Sirianni sucks ass. <laughs> wow. Oh wow. It's just ridiculous. Oh wow. Philly five hundred melting down. So stupid. Every week, stupidity. <laughs> I'm so sick of the dumbness. How can you be any dumber? Oh. How can you take DeAndre Swift out? Well, hello, good people. Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope you all have had a great Taco Tuesday. Um, I would say uh, Eagle fans don't seem to be quite as much, but I wouldn't know because I don't see very many of them any longer. They no longer come in, and it's sad because I miss my son. I, I miss my son, Philly 500. You know, it used to be I would get a text message from him every day. He'd send me pictures of all the things that were going on, and now I, I just don't hear from him anymore. What am I doing? Can't back here. And so before we start this video, I got to get this mother humping thing out of the way. Mark Holmes is my daddy. Okay, that's out of the way. Ow! Yeah, I, I don't hear from my son anymore. He, he doesn't call, he doesn't text, doesn't do anything. And I'm kind of amazed because I just think about where we were five weeks ago with the Philadelphia Eagles. They were flying high. They were the number one seed in the NFL. And, of course, they were laughing at the Cowboys, you know, constantly joking us about losing to the Arizona Cardinals. And now they have – they got some issues right now. They are literally talking about – because I heard some rumors of this earlier um, that Nick Sirianni could be fired that he is literally coaching for his job. And I'm kind of like, seriously? He hasn't been there that long, and he was just in the Super Bowl. But I'm hoping that he stays because I I'm like Philly. He's an idiot. And it seems like assistant coaches and coordinators do matter. They matter a lot. Listen <clears throat> to Jib Sports. This is them talking about how bad of a beating this was to Steichen. And then they came home to roost. The Niners destroyed them. The Cowboys destroyed them. The backup quarterback of Seattle drove 94 yards in the last minute to beat them. They stink. Do you understand? They're not winning anything. And if you want to pin it down, I'll pin Damn. it down for you. Because you're right. Yesterday was a microcosm. This team's coaching is abysmal. It's atrocious. Whoa. It's it's like a, it's like the college games that Nick Sirianni once participated in. One of those Division three college teams. They're awful. And I'm going to tell you something. I don't think he ever knew what the hell he was doing. Because he damn well does it now. Here's how I can prove it. All right, Dan? When you're a coach and you come out at 10 and 1, I went back and looked this up this morning. I got nothing going on. I'm retired now. <laughs> and I looked it up, right, Dan? And I, 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 what was he saying? And he went, you know, yeah, the record's great. This was a good win for us. But we still have a lot to work on. We have a lot of teaching to do. How's that teaching going on the defensive <laughs> side of the ball? Let's Ooh. just look at that. Because the defense, I have never seen a defense this bad. 449 yards. Four touchdown drives of 70 yards or more in the second half 
against one of the worst offenses in the NFL. And they didn't punt. If you they never they never use a punt. Britain Covey never got on the field. Right? Just explain this to me. All right. If you were using those wins as teaching devices, how's it working out for you? How you doing? How, yeah. How's that defense how's coming you? along? Wow. You've had a month and a half, two months to wow. fix it. What have you done? And why have you been completely unable to do a damn thing about it? Damn. I'm going to just say it, all right? There's a lot of people in this city thinking it because a hundred of them emailed me this morning, all right? Wow. They don't think Sirianni should go beyond this year. You think, he's coaching, you think he's coaching these next couple weeks for his job? I, now I do. Based on the fan response, all right? Here's the thinking the fans wow. are giving me, Dan. See if this works with you. If you're going to fire Doug Peterson after he won a Super Bowl, right? Why wouldn't you fire Nick Sirianni after he lost one? They know this. First of all, Howie Roseman would never acknowledge that the roster isn't great. He doesn't care about live. He thinks this is a Super Bowl caliber roster. So he's got to be watching this going, well, it's coaching. Now, he's right about it. Co- coaching is the number one problem on this team right now. Wow. What are you going to do about it? You want to bring him back? You want to bring this guy back another year? Couldn't wow. fix all this for all these weeks? Couldn't. Okay, so, you know, here's the thing that's kind of interesting because we end up getting a lot of flack as the Dallas Cowboys. We were told that, you know, the Cowboys, we, we'd find a way to get a win and stuff. And, you know, uh, and Micah Parsons, I think it was Micah, you know, basically went on and said, yeah, we got a win. It was great. And this, that, and the other. And they killed him because they said the Eagles, they get a win. And you constantly kept saying, hearing the guy say, we got a lot to work on. Yeah, you know, we can't be satisfied. We got a lot to work on. And it turns out they actually did have a lot to work on. You know, it's it's kind of funny. I know I'm a guy who's broadcasting from his mama's basement. Actually, it's not my mama's basement anymore. It, it's actually a 200-year-old house that was trash. It was trash. I'll admit it. It was really trash. So, you know, I'm here broadcasting from there. So I don't, you know, I'm no expert. But I th- seem to remember saying something to Philly 500. What if... The situation with Jalen Hurts is he ends up being RG3 or Carson Wentz. That you had a really good season with him, which they did, and then people got the book on him and figured him out. Maybe that's not the case with Jalen Hurts. Maybe it is that he needs good coaching, that he is not a franchise guy that doesn't need a head coach where, you know, say you're Peyton Manning and he's calling his plays and stuff. But – you can see that all of a sudden that guy is lost. The locker room is completely lost. And I was told, you're just a hater. You don't know what you're talking about. I said, Philly, I said, all of those runs, there were so many times that it was like the parting of the Red Sea and Jalen Hurts would just take off and run. And what you see with him right now is his first instinct, even though he's still got a good pocket, is to take off and run. And that goes back to coaching. He's not willing to stand in there and make a play, and teams are covering better to make sure that he does not make those big plays. And so that was one of the Eagles, you know, uh, YouTubing things. You know, big big time one. I mean, they're big time. Let's listen to my buddy, my son, Philly 500. I get it. But I think after that Buffalo game, I think these players went to the coaches, especially Nick Sirianni, and said, look, you know, we can't do this every week. We're down 10 and a half time. We have to come back. We need to make some changes. And Nick Sirianni basically told him, listen, we do what we do, and that's it. Uh, we're not changing anything. And I think guys like A.J. Brown probably feel like, I've already spoken. I've already said everything I could to the coaches. They're ignoring me. Because what do people do? What do people do when... You, they say their piece, and you still ignore them. At some mm-hmm. point, they shut down. They do. They shut down. They stop speaking. They shut down. That's what it is. And this coach 
has lost this locker room. <laughs> he has absolutely 100% lost this locker room. He still looks like a vampire. Uh, I think it was right around that Buffalo game, maybe after. Maybe it was building up before, and then going into that 49ers game was the breaking point. Uh, you know, I know the 49ers fans will say, oh, we broke the Eagles. We broke them. And the Dallas Cowboy fans always try to piggyback on anything that gives them credit. <laughs> uh, we broke them, man. Those two games oh, broke them. Man. The Eagles were broken when they came into that 49ers game. They were broken. Something happened. There was a disconnect. Go back and watch my videos uh, after that 49ers game. Uh, the Eagles, they didn't look right. Even in my live stream, the first quarter, I go, this team looks dead. They look like they didn't come to play today. Um, and something happened. Uh, what is it? I, I, I don't know. My, my thought is that the players went to the coaches. Mm. Coaches are unwilling to change, and I mean specifically Nick Sirianni. Then when you fire Sean Desai, it's such a panic move, right? They fire him, but they don't let him go, okay? And that was like that was such a panic move, and mm. it just helped lead the players to thinking this coach has no clue what he's doing. Wow. He has no clue what he's doing. Um, and the question really is this, I guess at the end of the day, is can Nick Sirianni survive? Can he uh, legitimately be the coach next year, or is this thing already done? Me personally, here's how I feel. I don't know if a coach can get back to locker room. When they lose it to the degree, it seems like Nick wow. Sirianni lost it. How do we really know if he fully lost it or not? I guess we really don't. We can only look at what we see. I think a good barometer for knowing this is if the Eagles don't get out of the first round of the playoffs, mm -hmm. if they lose in the first round of the playoffs, I think he's got to go. If they get to like the divisional round and play good in that divisional round and lose, maybe you give them a chance. You, you change your coordinators. Wow. You do some stuff like that. But... Uh, a coach that loses a locker room to the level I think that the, Nick Sirianni did, I don't know that he can get out of the first round of playoffs. I honestly, you know, I don't know if they're going to win this week against the Giants. That's unbelievable. Tyrod Taylor is better. Is is better than uh, what was that kid's name? Tony. Uh, <laughs> that guy. I didn't Tommy know his DeVito. stupid name. Stinks. <laughs> I can't remember names of people that oh, stink. Lordy. All right. Danny DeVito. He's better than Danny oh, DeVito. He he gave the Giants a legitimate shot in that second half of the game mm. against us. This defense can't stop anything. And they're saying, you know, I heard Matt Patricia. Well, it's on me and it's my fault. Yeah, kind of. But if this team is already checked out, it doesn't matter what you say. It doesn't matter what coaching adjustments you make. It doesn't matter. They've checked That's out. That's true. And I, I think this team wow. is on the verge of checking out. I think you have coaches in my opinion, that do not listen to the players. It's just my hunch. It's just my guess. Um, it, you know, looking at a guy like A.J. Brown and his response to not wanting to talk, the reason he doesn't want to talk is most likely he's already said what he had to say to the coaches, and he's been shut down. Mm. So you have a guy here that uh, isn't going to talk, and now we know that a lot of the players agree with A.J. Brown. They're just not wow. handling it the same way. So... The question is, Is did Nick Sirianni, has he lost this team? And I think if you lost the locker room, it's a fireable offense. And I know it's crazy, right? You have a coach that crazy. took your team to the Super Bowl last year. And then for the first 10, 11 weeks, was literally had the best record in football. They were like 32 straight weeks where the Eagles had the best record in football the last two years. It's an absolutely amazing record. And I look at this team and I say they're way too talented to have this kind of collapse. Yep. Uh, yeah, we have deficiencies. We need linebackers. We need to do something at the safety position. We're going to need new corners. There are some real flaws, fundamental flaws on this team that can't be fixed until the offseason. However, they were still good enough and talented enough to go to 10-1. and 1, Okay? And... I know that this team somewhere is still very talented, but I think they checked out. They? I think, I think their heart's not in it because I think the coach lost the locker room. So can Nick Sirianni actually be fired? Because wow, that is just mind blowing to me to hear him literally say after all of the caca I heard about how great this team was and how they were going to be um, fourteen. 
14 and three minimum that they were going to the Super Bowl to now hear them talk about firing the coach. Wow. That's all I got to say about that. So have a good night there, Philly and Eagle fans. I miss you guys. Disrespected yet? Does this defense have any heart? That's no, true. they suck. I've been telling you all season, they Philly. They've shit on you. Oh. They've shit on you. <laughs> Don't you hear me, Jordan Davis, <laughs> Caleb Carter? It's like they shit on you. Oh. They've shit on you. <laughs> they have shit on you. Don't. Don't you hear me, Jordan Davis, <laughs> Caleb Carter? It's like, they shit on you. Kill them. Oh, my goodness. Did he say they, they cock it on them?